We have finally done it. After dealing with roughly hours of dead time in between pitches, the World Series is here. A time when the greats are heralded throughout time, dynasties are forged, and long curses are finally broken after years of agony. Before we begin, let's take a look at how the other contestants did. Here's a movie script. A forlorn loser suddenly has everything go right for them. They even have a three-run lead in the first. Then reality hits. And ironically, it's to those damn Yankees again. I didn't mention you were playing the Yankees. Well, yes, they've only eliminated you from five of the last six times you were in the postseason now. You are so close to property that it's all but illegal in at least 47 states. It's like Sisyphus rolling the ball up the hill anymore. But seriously, great season, and hopefully you can keep it up. Fucking Yankees. Trust the Rockies pitching, they said. They finally turned a corner, they said. Well, it sure as shit didn't look like it during the wildcard game. John Gray was the latest pitcher to completely shit the bed for the Rockies when it mattered the most. Even with that brilliant murderer's row you have, the pitchers thought it would be best to simply sling shit over the mound. 11 runs against? You should be ashamed, wasting Arenado and Charlie Blackman like that. Throw some more meatballs, will ya? Well, I will give you this. You guys at least made it somewhat competitive with the Astros. For all of two games. Perhaps I overestimated how much of a steaming pile of shit this team ends up becoming in October. The only guy you really had a chance against was Verlander, but even then it wasn't enough to delay the inevitable. All this middling futility has cost John Farrell his job as the ineffective manager of the Sox. Honestly, it's about time. I now await Dave Dombrowski trading half of the team in an attempt to reload like he did in Detroit. You had one job, Cleveland. One fucking job. Close out a fucking series and at least three games for once in your lives. You failed. Again. The Yankees all but handed you blankets of smallpox after game two. Literally everything sunk into the Cuyahoga. So-called ace pitchers. White hot Jose Ramirez. Edwin and his parrot baseball fundamentals. You made Tommy fucking Canely look like Mariano Rivera. Even worse, you reopened the Pandora's box of locusts on the baseball world known as Yankees fans. The second year in a row you've done this to us. You are the chokiest bunch of chokes to ever choke their way out of fucking Chokeville. Wipe that shit-eating grin off your cheesy-ass logo's face. You're pathetic. Congratulations, your team still can't make it past the second round. <sighs> Turns out you gave your fans false hope after taking Game 4 in Chicago. Game 5 turned out to be another prolapse of a performance, just like every other major game in recent playoff history. Dusty Baker happened. Max Scherzer on limited rest happened. Fielding errors happened. For the love of God, the Cubs were literally handing you this game on a silver platter, but you chose to choke on the air itself. You have officially become the Washington Capitals of baseball. It's the only thing you've earned in this decade. Way to waste another year of Bryce Harper. Arizona, what the hell was that supposed to be? You had analytics and momentum on your side. You led the season series against the Dodgers, only to pull that. That vaunted hitting core was offensively bad, literally turning into ghosts against the billion dollar arms of LA. That newfound pitching had no chance whatsoever. You can close off that pool all you want, but you shat in it for three straight games. I jinxed these guys, didn't I? God damn it. Well into an incredibly surprising playoff run, the Yankees were primed to returning to the promised land of another World Series appearance. To the fortune of many in the baseball world, the Baby Bombers couldn't solve the labyrinth of Minute Maid Park. Deep in Texas, the bats fell silent and the pitching succumbed to good old Southern hospitality. Although there is one consensus, Gary Sanchez should never play catcher again. Don't worry though, you'll be back here soon enough. The Yankees never stay down for long. Unfortunately, we have all come to a firm realization. The previous series was one the Cubs weren't meant to win. The Dodgers completely toyed with their prey from the majority of the games played, with only a blip in the radar to show for any sort of resistance. The god-awful pitching and inconsistent hitting that the Cubs shown through the season came back to haunt them in the worst ways. It was all but a massacre in name only. Honestly, I couldn't be happier. Fly that L as high as the Chrysler building. It would only be more satisfying if the Indians didn't shit the bed last year. No, I'm not a salty fan of a division opponent. You shut up. Let's just get to the championship contenders. Years of horrific frustrations for the Astros may finally come to an end soon. Houston is back on the baseball map. Need I remind their fans of Jeff Wade throwing around oodles of cash at guys like Kaz Matsui and Carlos Lee? I think not. 
This new age Astro Squad has borne the fruits of outstanding scouting, drafting, and player development. From the intricacies of the international market to the MLB player draft, most prospects have panned out, like Carlos Correa, a former top draft pick and key piece to the hitting core. George Springer and Alex Bregman are a couple of others in this category. However, the top prize for the Astros has to be Jose Altuve, proof that the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz are the new market inefficiency. Big things do come in small packages. The man has been key to Houston's success so far, and he will need to be on top of his game. Pitching-wise, the Astros boast an arsenal of weapons to choose from. Do they take you with Dallas Keuchel? Or maybe they strike with Brad Peacock or Charlie Morton. Better yet, new arrival Justin Verlander, whom still has plenty in the tank this postseason. A strong bullpen led by Ken Giles effectively shuts the door on their opponents. This return has been a long time coming for the Astros. The last time they made it here, they were swept by the White Sox. You can stop laughing now. If there's a year to break the legacy of failure, it's this one. However, there is one thing standing in their way. Well done, Dodgers. You finally made a World Series for the first time in almost three decades, and all it took was spending the yearly GDP of Grenada. Ever since Frank McCourt stopped pissing around while allowing the team to rot, the Dodgers have printed so much money you could call it a borderline counterfeiting scheme. It's the Yankees of the 2000s on steroids. Even now, they are embracing the tactics that a lot of small market squads use to try and level the playing field. Market inefficiencies, bad chuck money and everything. The Dodgers are at the cutting edge of the analytics world and have a shitload of resources at their disposal, Moneyball is shitting its pants. Despite their lavish exterior, the Dodgers have been outstanding at developing from within. Leading the way are young talent like Corey Seager, Yasmani Grandal, and Cody Bellinger, one of the hottest young bats to emerge this year. Justin Turner has proven himself as one of the most underrated players in all of baseball. Yasiel Puig has turned in an outstanding postseason performance worthy of his early hype in the league, with the flash to complement it. Pitching leads us to the fruits of the Dodger organization, led by Clayton Kershaw, who has lacked the total misery of his pitching like he has in most Octobers, complemented by big-time arms like Kenta Maeda, Rich Hill, and newfound acquisition Yu Darvish. Doing anything against Kenley Jansen? Yeah, good luck with that. The Dodgers have been hungry for a title since the ownership change, and this will be the validation that their efforts won't be in vain. Somebody is shedding their reputation for choking this year. Will it be the cursed Astros or the money pit of the Dodgers? Who will win? This is looking to be a pretty tight series by analyzing all of the parts in question. Both teams boast incredible talents in hitting and on the mound. In this regard, I firmly believe the Dodgers pitching staff is the hot hand. They have effectively stifled several outstanding hitting cores so far this postseason with no signs of letting up. By this logic, the Dodgers pitching will completely fall apart and the Astros will win in seven games. Congrats on breaking that legacy of failure, Houston. Like the 1969 Mets, it's the impossible dream revisited.